Welcome back guys, my name is Angelo. It's true that the financial independence retire early movement is a lot more popular in the US in part due to higher potential earnings for skilled workers. However, I know quite a few people that were able to retire early in Europe as well at a young age. My wife and I have also been working on this goal together for the past seven years. We want to reach a point where we don't have to work anymore if we don't want to and where our investments will be able to cover our living costs indefinitely. And even though we live in Austria, which is certainly not known as having a low cost of living or competitive tax rates, and we now have a beautiful one-year-old girl to take care of, we should be able to mathematically reach financial independence in a few years if things go well, while both of us are still in our 30s. But today I'm not going to go into too much detail on our story, which I already discussed in other videos. Instead, we'll be focusing on ways to speed up the journey to early retirement based on my own experience and what I learned from friends who reached that point already. The first thing that's important to realize is that your savings rate is directly linked to how long it takes to retire early. Your savings rate is the percentage of your monthly income that you're able to put aside and invest on a regular basis. To show you how much impact a high savings rate can have, take a look at this. With a savings rate of 10%, it takes you 51 years to have enough to retire. With a rate of 50%, only 17 years. While if you're able to set aside 70% of your income, you should be able to retire in only 8.5 years. As you can see, if you want to reach financial independence faster than the current trajectory you're on, you need to find ways to increase your savings rate. The first way is to lower your expenses. Actually, before doing that, it makes sense to review what you're spending your money on every month. I just want to clarify that this part is not about restricting yourself and cutting out everything that's fun. Here you simply want to make sure that you're spending money on things that you really enjoy and value in life. If the value you're getting from an expense matches its price and the number of work hours required to pay for it, then go ahead. Meanwhile, if it's simply an impulse purchase that you don't really need or something that you're really only getting to impress someone else, then you might want to reconsider. When looking at what you spend your money on, start with your largest expense and work your way down. The largest expense for most people usually ends up being housing. Before getting a large house or apartment simply because you can afford it, ask yourself if you wouldn't be happier in a smaller, less expensive place with you needing to work less to pay for it and with you potentially being able to retire from work entirely earlier. For us, the low rent in the studio apartment we were previously very happy in was a major driver throughout our own FI journey and we only switched to a larger three-room apartment last year once we actually felt that we needed more space as my wife got pregnant. Next, look at things like transportation, which often tends to be the second largest expense. If you live in a city, do you really need a car and all the costs that come with it? Or do you have good public transportation? And if you do need a car, do you really need to buy the latest model new straight from the factory? Or wouldn't an older used car do the job just as well at a fraction of the price? By the way, I just want to clarify I'm not an expert on cars. We don't own one since we're very lucky to have a great public transport system for only 365 euros per year here in Vienna, Austria. Your food expenses might also be worth reviewing, especially if you're dining out or having food delivered on a regular basis. If you believe it's worth the money compared to cooking at home, then that's perfectly fine. In our case, we usually don't find that to be the case. As a result, we tend to limit our restaurant visits or food deliveries to once per week. And even then, we don't need anything fancy, but that's just our personal preference. When it comes to subscriptions, like like Netflix, Prime, Google Drive, Spotify, etc., which can quickly pile up in the digital age, I find it usually ends up being a lot cheaper to sign up for a family account and to split that with a few friends, with each paying their fair share. Sometimes you can even use GeoArbitrage to get digital subscriptions at a much lower price by signing up in another currency via a VPN connected to that specific country. But that's not something I'm going to cover in this video, so just do your own research. Meanwhile, when it comes to everything else, just make sure that the price you're paying matches the enjoyment you're getting from it. Talking about that, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If that's the case, don't forget to gently tap the like button and to subscribe if you haven't yet. Also, if you'd like to support me, you can find the best local brokers in Europe and other financial services I use to invest in the description below. Now at this point, after reviewing where your money is going, you might have found a few ways to optimize your expenses. As extra motivation for cutting unnecessary spending, I find it useful to calculate how much smaller your retirement nest egg would need to be using the 4% rule, which I discussed in more detail in my How to Retire Early in Europe video. For this, we just need to take how much something is costing us monthly, multiply that by 12 to get to the yearly cost, and then either multiply the amount by 25 or divide it by 4%. A monthly 100 euro reduction in expenses, for example, now means you need 30,000 euros less to retire. And if you're able to reduce your expenses by 500 euros, for example, by moving to a less expensive apartment, you suddenly need a whopping 150,000 euros less in order to retire early and never have to work again, according to the 4% rule. 
That's a massive difference right there, which could shorten your time to retirement by many years. And even if your expenses were to go up again in the future, ours probably will as well, not that we're parents, you'll still be able to save and invest the difference until then, which will speed up your progress towards FI. The second way you can improve your savings rate is by increasing your income. Yes, I know, of course, this is easier said than done. Obviously, we would all like to make more money. But by being open to learning new skills, by taking on more responsibility at work, by having the courage to ask for a raise when you feel you deserve it, or by switching to another employer that is willing to pay more, you should be able to increase your earnings over time. But that's just one side of the equation. As your income grows, it's crucial that you resist the temptation of lifestyle inflation or the need to impress your neighbors, friends and family now that you're earning more. If you manage to keep your expenses at the same level or to only increase them slightly as your income grows, you'll be able to fast track your way to financial independence. At least that's what happened to my wife and I. As we started earning more year by year, we still kept our expenses under control. As a result, we've been able to maintain a 70% savings rate on average, even though we now have a larger apartment and a one-year-old daughter to take care of financially. And now seven years into our early retirement journey, based on the amount we've been able to set aside and invest so far, we're not that far off from being able to stop working entirely if we so choose. Okay, now we talked about the two obvious ways to reach FI faster, namely by optimizing your income and expenses. But there's actually another option which in my opinion is not discussed often enough. And no, I'm not talking about taking on excessive risk with your investments. In my opinion, most people are best served by simply buying a single low-cost ETF covering thousands of stocks around the world like our favorite the Vanguard FTSE All World and just holding that long term. By the way, you can find the best low-cost brokers in Europe to do that and some other videos I recorded on the subject in the description below. So, the alternative I'm trying to to get to is something I realized from every single person I know that retired at a young age. Even though these people don't need to work anymore as they're set financially, most of them are still working on something today, in this case on projects they enjoy and are interested in. As it turns out, even traveling, having tons of free time and lying on the beach can get boring and unfulfilling after a while. At some point, I think we all still want to contribute and do something useful with our time. And the interesting part is that many of these friends are now making enough extra income from these passion projects to cover their living expenses, which kind of makes you wonder why they needed to accumulate a large nest egg to begin with, right? What I'm trying to get to is this. If you have the opportunity to pursue something you're excited about, something you would want to do even if money was not a factor anymore, and you're able to cover your expenses with it, then in my opinion you should seriously consider it. Even if it pays less compared to your current job, it might enable you to live your ideal lifestyle, the one you would want to be living once you reach financial independence already today, instead of sometime in the future once you accumulate enough money. Just to clarify, I'm still a big fan of the financial independence retire early move I'm so grateful that we discovered it via Mr. Money Mustache almost 7 years ago or my wife and I wouldn't be where we are today. With all the freedom that comes from knowing that we don't need to worry about our expenses for a very long time and being able to spend plenty of time together as a family to make sure we don't miss any part of our daughter growing up. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps up my views on how I believe you can speed up your journey towards early retirement in Europe. While most of the video was about the financial aspect like raising your savings rate by being aware of your spending and finding ways to increase your income over time, I wanted to make sure you don't forget why you may be on this path in the first place. If there's a way for you to make a living from something you would want to be working on even if you didn't have to, already today instead of in the future then you should consider going for it. After all, if you're able to create a life for yourself you don't need to retire from then you basically won already. Of course, building a nice financial safety net can't hurt either since it's going to make you a lot more relaxed about money if things change. Either way, I'm confident that simply working on financial independence by setting aside and investing money on a regular basis instead of wasting it on stuff you don't need will add a lot of freedom to your life just like it has in our case. No matter if you pick the express route via a high savings rate or if you take your time and try to already find a way to cover your expenses via work that you find more fulfilling. Now before you take off, I want to hear from you guys. What is your savings rate right now and is there something you would want to be working on if money was not a factor anymore? Leave a comment below. Also don't forget to gently tap that like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you haven't yet. If you'd like to support me, feel free to use my links in the description below to the best low-cost brokers in Europe for ETFs. And please Please keep in mind that none of what I shared today was of course Mendes investment advice, I'm just openly sharing what we're doing and what we learned so far on our journey towards financial independence in Europe. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and until next time.